Today's lecture, we're going to go over properties of logarithms. Uh, first example we're going to do is writing the logarithm as a sum and simplify it if it's possible. So let's try this. Remember, if we have a multiplications like this one, a times x. Multiplications, we can stretch out into additions. So we should be able to do log 2, 8 plus log 2, x. So multiplication, we can stretch out into the additions. Make sure to have the same small base for both. Let's see anything else we can do. Uh, we can rewrite 8 into the 2 cube. And we know that if we have a same base, small base and larger base, the exponent itself will be the solutions, right? So we can simplify it into 3. And log 2x we cannot reduce any further, so that must be it. What about next one? Next one, we have uh, three multiplications, so five times x times y. So this means we can uh, extend it into three terms using addition because it's multiplications. So natural logarithm of 5 plus natural logarithm of x plus natural logarithm of y. And let's see if we can simplify it. Natural logarithm of small base is e, and I don't see any e as the larger base. So look why we cannot reduce any further with the solutions we have here. Let's see if we can try another. This time, uh, we're going to... Uh, stretch out our logarithm using multiplications, I mean, um, the division, so it will be subtractions, right? So this is divisions, and we know that division can change it into subtractions. So this is going to be log 3c minus log 3d. And no common base, no exponents, so we cannot reduce any further. So that's what we're going to have. Let's try the other one. This is another um, divisions, so we can change to subtractions. But then we don't have small base, it means you have log 10. So if I wanted to rewrite this, with the same base of 10, this is log 10 to 10 to the third exponent is 1,000, right? This is third exponent, which this can be reduced to 3. Let's look at example 3. Example 3. Um, apply the power property of logarithmic. So if you have a exponents, that exponent can be uh, changed to multiplications. Uh, so let's see if we have any power on this natural logarithmic. And we know that we have square as a power, but also uh, square roots or, or uh, roots can be changed to the power, and this is going to be one fifth, which is same as lin x two fifth. So that power itself, we should be able to change it to multiplications of the natural logarithm. So just going over those property that we went over from section two um, to make sure that we understand how to apply. So this one, we have two exponents already and I don't have any uh, 
radical to change to exponents so that exponent itself become the multiplications to the given logarithms. Um, let's look at example four. Example four, it say, write the expression as the sum or difference of logarithms. The first one here, we have log two and um, z cube over x, y to the fifth exponents. So if we wanted to change all this into sum and difference, they're asking you to stretch out your given logarithm. I have one logarithm. If I stretch out, how many logarithms should I stretch out into? You have um, one on the numerator and two. So you have x times y. So this division right here, I can change to subtractions. This is multiplications, right? So I should be able to extend it into three logarithm. So let me write that. I have log two. What's the numerator? Numerator is z cube. And followed by x, y to the fifth exponent. This is all denominator. So I'm going to open the parentheses to show um, following this subtraction will be all on denominator and using the log 2 I have x time change it to additions and then I will have log y well log 2 y to the fifth exponent and if we wanted to open the parenthesis we can distribute the negative and maybe at the same time, if I have any exponents, I can change that into the multiplications. I'm stretching out and using the, the power rules, right? So it'll be 3 log 2 z minus log 2x. And distributing negative, this addition become uh, subtractions. And I have exponent change to multiplications five times log two y. So I stretch out into three terms with two other multiplications. And look like I cannot simplify it any further. So that must be it. Let's try one more time. Um, this problem right here. First thing I'm going to do is I wanted to get rid of the radical because radical is, you know, holding numerator and denominator separately. I mean, and all together, but we, we wanted to have it separately. So let's see what happens if we get rid of the cube roots. Cube roots apply numerator, denominator, and if you wanted to write it in a separate, you have cube roots will be one third, and denominator you have 10 to the one third exponents. So in other words, this is same as log x plus y the two-third because you wanted to combine the exponents to make a simple exponent right so now you have two terms one on the numerator and one on denominator so you should be able to get 2 log 10 with subtraction between so it'll be x plus y two-third and because it's subtraction, now it changed to, um, I mean, division, so it will be subtractions. And then you have log 10, 10 to the 1 third exponent. And now when we simplify it or also um, uh, use the exponential rule, power rules, then it will become 2 third times 
log x plus y minus. And this one is going to be 1 third times log 10. But log 10, we know that we have small base 10 right there, which is going to give you equals to 1. So multiply by 1, you don't really need to write it, right? So this is what you have. Example 5, this time we're going to write the expression as the single logarithm and simplify the answer if it's possible. So the other example that we were doing, example 1 through 4, we did that so that we can get familiar with those properties that we uh, went over from the previous sections. So once we understand the property, this is the real problem, example 5. So how can we make um, or, or simplify our logarithmic expressions? So, so it will help you to solve when we need to solve it as equations. So this exercise is actually what we're going to really use it when we start solving um, equation next sections. So simplifying or making into single logarithmic uh, expressions. So I will say this is the most important exercise, right? So then let's see. We have three log. So the one with the positive. One with the positive, long as we have the same uh, base, one with the positive will be on the numerator and one with the negative will be on denominator over negative log to 7 so that's going to be on denominator negative log to 5 that's another denominator so then the reason I'm doing it as the multiplications because remember if we factor this negative negative from here and here then this will become positive, right? So whatever that's on the bottom, I mean, uh, subtraction will be on the bottom of the fractions, okay? So then this gives you log two. Um, you should be able to reduce five goes into 5 1 times, 6 1 times, and 2. So it will be 112 over 7. And then we know that's equals to log 2. 7 goes into 1 12, 112, 16 times. And 16, I know that I can rewrite this using the base of 2. It will be 2 to the fourth exponents. And we know that's equals to 4. Don't forget, whenever you have small base, larger base, same, then exponent become your solutions, right? That was one of your properties. So this is how you can simplify it. Let's look at the second one. So then um, I have a multiplication. So first thing I wanted to do is changing that multiplication into exponents. So that will be log b to the 1 half exponents and minus log c 1 half exponents. 1 half, half exponents, we know that's um, square roots, right? And I'm going to show you on this one what happened if I factor negative, right? Negative, then I will get log um, square root b. Because I factor negative from the third term, this becomes plus log square root of c. So then you get log a cubed over square root of b. 
ABC. And you can compare this with example one, I mean A. Remember, I say the third term become the multiplications because you're factoring the negative. This two term will goes into the denominator, right? And I showed you here exactly the same thing. When I factor this negative, this 2 will be denominator as the multiplication because it's addition between, right? With the same reason, it become multiplication on denominators. So whatever you have negative, whatever you have negative, remember those terms with the negative will be always on denominator. Let's look at another one. So this one, I see multiplication, so I will change that into uh, power. So this is x to the 1 half power. We know that's going to be square root of x, right? And plus, um, we have natural logarithm of x squared minus 1 and minus natural logarithm of x plus 1. So if we're looking at this three term, we see this is positive, this is positive, only negative is this one right here. So if we wanted to tie it in together into one natural logarithm, the one with the positive will be numerator, one with denominator will be on denominator. So then you get natural logarithm of square root of x times x squared minus 1 over x plus 1. And one thing that I notice is that um, x, mi x squared minus 1 is difference of square. So we could say x minus 1 times x plus 1 over x plus 1. And get rid of the common term from the numerator and denominator. And what you have remaining is natural logarithm of square root of x times x minus 1 over 1. Which, when your denominator is 1, you don't really need to write them down, right? Okay, so only um, property that we didn't get to go over is uh, changing our base formulas. So example six, we're going to try that formulas. Um, the question will be evaluating. So if we have log 540, well, let's say if we have log 10, uh, 100. We know this is going to be equals to 2 because using all these other uh, property we have, right? This is going to be 2. Or, or you can also find this answer 2 using your calculator because calculator you do have log and you do have natural, uh, uh, natural log signs. So if you depends on what types of calculator you have, you might have to push 10 first or 100 first and then push log, that will give you this is equals to 2, right? Or or you uh, push the logarithm function key first and then push 100. If it's a graphing calculator, it will give you 2. Or if it's a natural logarithm of e, then um, this is going to be equals to 1, and all this 2 right here, because you do have the function key on the calculator, you should be able to find out the value easily if you don't know how to do it, right? You can use calculator to find out 2 without going th these steps. But what, at, what, what about if you're small base is smaller or different than 10 or natural logarithms. How do we figure out this value if we cannot use the properties, one of the properties? 
And this is the uh, problem like that. So if we cannot use the properties that we had, there were uh, 10 properties. Um, so if we cannot use the nines ones, then we can use the, the last one right here. Uh, how are we going to change this? This, this can be changed into log 10 hundred forty over log ten five so you can plug in this into the calculator and figure out your value or you can also um, if you don't want it to change it into log ten you can also change it into lin hundred forty over lin five so either way when you plug in this value into the calculator, you will get uh, wait, hold on, let me erase this, three point zero seven. So if you cannot use the nine of the properties, the other nines of the property to solve these problems, then you can always use the change base formulas. Okay, so if I change this second problems, then I can change to natural logarithms and larger base will be on the numerator and small base will be on denominator. And when you input this value into the calculator, you will see this gives 1.58. And you try out and make sure this is the value you get because if you have a different setting you might not end up getting the right values so before you use your calculator on an exam make sure you have the right setting by you know trying the same problems to get the same answer